Hey there addicts and welcome back to my channel. It's good to have you here. A few people requested that I recreate this look, especially when I came on my live stream and a few of you liked it. So this is a video tutorial on how I create this autumn, fall, winter makeup look. <music> back to my channel if you're new here and you're not yet subscribed to my channel what are you waiting for please go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and be sure to hit the bell right next to it so that you don't miss out when I upload new content so today guys I'm gonna be doing a makeup tutorial on how I create a autumn you know winter fall look uh, I'm going for something slightly vampy with a bit of red lip uh, but not the bright red um, more like you know a darkish tony vampire kind of kind of red you know blood red but not red blood if that makes sense <laughs> so I've already gone ahead and shaped up my brows um, if you really want to know how I do my brows there is another video on my channel that teaches you how I create my brows and there should be a flag going up right now or a card tag you can click on that but don't click on that while you're watching this video click on it maybe after or just go through my channel you find a brow tutorial there and how I get to my brows so without further ado let's get right into creating so here guys I'm going to prime my eyelids with my P. Louise um, Primer base and my one is Rumor in number four, shade number four. I'm just going ahead and, and priming my eyes here. I prefer to use my fingers to ensure that I'm covering every part of my eyelids. You can use a brush if you want to. Don't worry, my hands are super clean because um, I've washed my hands before applying my makeup. I'm a sucker for washing my hands. I, I maybe have OCD or something, but I have to wash my hands. So I'm going to go ahead and prime the second lid as well uh, and do the exactly the same thing I have done with the first lid. So at this point, I am using uh, an eyelid dome brush. Uh, my brand, well, the brand of brush I'm using is a Bagelian one. I've had these for quite a while. Um, so I'm going to use that to pick up some dark eyeshadow from my Morphe 35N palette. And I'm going to use that to go around my crease area. At this point, I didn't even realize that my camera was moving and sliding out of the clamp. So I do apologize that um, you can only see half of my face. In any case, it's zoomed in now and you can see the details of um, me applying the dark shade, like a dark brown, like an organic brown. I'm just applying that to my crease area and dragging it all the way up to my eyebrow area too. I do apologize about the blur on the screen. I didn't actually see this until after I had uploaded it. Um, so now I'm going ahead to grab my Morphe palette. I can't remember the number of this palette, but it's the one that has all the rainbow colors in it. 
and I'm grabbing one of the red shades there and again from my crease area I am dragging that into my brow bone area just above my brow well just below my brow bone area um, just I didn't want it to be too dark I wanted it to have some kind of autumn feel and red and auburn and orangey feel to uh, my eyelid actually So here I'm going to grab the darkest shade from my Tarte um, eyeshadow palette. It's the uh, golden palette I think it is. And I'm just using that as my contour colour for my eyeshadow. Uh, I didn't want to use black because I didn't want it to be really, really, really that dark. I just wanted a transition and a two-tone colour. Almost like a sharp crease, a sharp cut crease. But that's not exactly what I'm going for. I just want two different colors there you. that you can see. Um, so it looks more like a um, um, burgundy, aubergine, brown, mahogany shades of colors. So now I'm blending it in. I'm blending all the colors in together to ensure that there isn't anything that's too harsh. As I'm doing that, I am also dragging the color just below my brow bone. Uh, just so that the color spreads out and this is where the work comes in so I spend a lot of time blending to ensure that everything sits well um, that even if you are going to see a demarcation line it's not such a deep line but you can still see the gradients of the colors going into one another As some of you may know, putting colors together can be difficult. And when you do find the colors that you do want to put together, blending is the key. You have to blend and blend and blend. It's really important to blend. So right now, I'm grabbing some of the P. Louise um, eyeshadow base primer again and applying that to my eyelids now. And I'm trying to be really, really careful with regards to creating a definite and a, a defined line because I'm gonna pack on some colors, lighter colors on the lid. So that's what I've done there. Just using a primer to create um, a base for the next color to go on my lid. So sorry guys, I forgot to show you the palette I was working with now. I am still using the Morphe 35N palette which has the neutral colors in it. And I'm just applying a kind of peach, pinky on the tone um, eyeshadow, matte eyeshadow to my lid. That's all I've done over there. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and contour it. I will also do the same for the second lid uh, with the primer as a base layer and then I'll go on and pack on the eyeshadow onto that. So here guys both um, eyes have been done now and I'm literally going back in with the dome brush I initially started with just to create more contour to the crease line. I want it to be defined now and I want it to come out a bit more. I want the dark colors to pop a little bit more. So I'm just using the residue from that brush that I started with initially when I first started applying color to my eyes. So now I'm going to go ahead and line my eyes with, I have the Crazy Color by Barry M, um, eyeline pen, pen, I'm going to use that to just line my eyes because I'm going to apply my lashes next, so I don't want to go into my colors on my eyes, so I'll definitely need to line my eyes so that the glue actually just sits there, and then I'll go back in with the eyeliner again just before I complete the makeup look.
so here guys I'm not actually going to wing it out so much because I will come back and do that once my foundation blusher and highlighter is on so I made a mistake here I'm gonna have to go in and correct it so if you do ever make a mistake don't feel like you can't correct it you just need to be slightly more steady it may be that the eyeliner is become wider than you initially wanted to be um, just go ahead and correct the other side as well and until you get the desired width of um, liner that you want So guys, I was kind of caught up with what lashes I wanted to use because I have so many different types of lashes and I wasn't too sure which one I wanted and I was getting really overwhelmed because I really liked all of them. So I thought I'll play around with the little graphics over there. <laughs> Don't mind me. Then I remembered... I had a Modella Slim Miss Beauty pack of lashes so this was what I decided to use if some of you have seen my shaffles unboxing video you would see that I'd um, mentioned these lashes on there I really like these lashes they're quite nice they're from a fellow youtuber her name is Modella Slim you can look her up and she has a website where she you can purchase some of her products and she sells amazing lashes if you go there and you want to purchase these lashes you are going to get 30 percent discount if you use my code which is vera so i've gone ahead i've popped on the lashes and here they are they're quite long they're really minky they're soft um the fibers are really nice as well and it feels real it's not too heavy these were quite long for my eye shape though but i still liked them so right now i'm about to color correct I recently reacted to something, I'm not sure if it's the new soap I decided to start using on my face, which is a charcoal soap. It just started giving me um, a bit of um, spots, which now led into blemish because I just couldn't stop touching them. So I'm just trying to correct some areas on my face. Now this look I'm creating today, it's not so much about building so, uh, co coverage on the skin, it's just more to show you the darker shades and how to apply those during the winter season. I'm just blending in the color corrector. I used a Revolution color corrector. It's from a store here, Superdrug. And Revolution is a brand that's recently taken over over here in the UK. And they have really, really, really amazing, amazing products. I have a couple of the foundations, a couple of the eyeshadows, and I use the color corrector and their baking oil whenever I feel the need to uh, bake my skin. But again, today, it's not a, a detailed video as per se, it's just more how to apply darker shades in winter, autumn or fall season. So now I'm applying the Pond's Oil Control Cream as my primer on my skin. This stuff is really, really amazing. It's such a tiny pot and it's so expensive. That little tiny pot was like 11 pounds and I've had it for a while. So I'm going to use that um, all over my face where I get really, really oily. That's my forehead and my T-zone area. And I'm going to apply it to places where I haven't applied the corrector as well because I don't want the color to start shifting or to start getting um, mixed up. So here I'm going to use my Kiko Mattifying Primer. I recently just got this using my Kiko Voucher. I'm going to do another video where you'll see uh, all the products that I received from Kiko. And I'm going to review those. So this primer is the first time I'm trying it out. It actually feels really smooth on the skin. But I'll do a more detailed review on that shortly. And if you guys can see, I have a natural contoured face. If you can see along the lines of my forehead and my hairline, down to my sides, you can see that my face is darker there. That's my natural contour, guys. So it makes it easy for me to see where to contour and where to highlight. And these are places you need to look out for on your face whenever you're doing your makeup. Right now, I have taken my Clinique foundation in shades i think it's 118 
Um, this is the one that matches my skin tone at the moment because the weather has changed and my skin has just gone slightly brighter than what it is or what it used to be or what it was in the summer. So I'm applying that all over my face uh, to exactly where my skin is quite light. Um, I'm not going to go in too much on my forehead. I'm just applying it to where the light catches and I'm going to leave out the areas where my skin is actually naturally contoured so that it's a guide for me. I can easily follow that when it's time for me to contour my face. As you can see, I've gotten a good coverage from just applying the foundation. Only the one pump and it goes a long way for me. Less is more sometimes. Right now, I am going to go ahead with my Primark. Yes, you heard me. Primark concealer this concealer is two pounds guys and it's absolutely amazing it, it has a really 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 nice consistency and i couldn't believe it primark is like one of the cheapest stores to buy clothes their makeup some of the stuff that they have is actually not too bad so right now i am just contouring well i'm highlighting areas on my face that's under my eyes along my um lip my top lip under my on my chin and the bridge of my nose and a little bit on my forehead i'm using my beauty blender brush which is um well, beauty blender rather not brush it's wet and i'm just using that to push that into my skin once i'm happy with that i'm going to now uh, apply my contour so that's a little chanel um foundation that i have there i can't remember the exact name uh, I'm gonna use that to go along my nose, like the outer part of my nose, along the bridge of my nose, where I want the contour. This is a very, very dark shade, so I'm literally stroking it onto my nose as opposed to applying it in full. I'm just using really, really light strokes to get the color on so that I don't overpower it with a dark foundation. So once I've done that, uh, I'm going to uh, blend that in thoroughly until I'm happy with the uh, shade. I'm also using the same brush to contour my cheek area, just above my cheekbones. And the residue from that, I'll go ahead and work my way around the hairline where my darkest shades are. Uh, I tap that in and I drag that down to meet with the lighter shades that I had created earlier. I'm also going to apply that to my cupid bowl. Yes. <laughs> and then right under my chin, um, along my jaw lines, so that it blends in with my neck and you can actually see the silhouette and the contour of the face. So with the other end of my beauty blender, I am actually going in and pushing that into my skin. I didn't drag it. I'm not dragging. I'm just tapping it into my skin and working with the lines that I'd already created using the lighter shades so that everything blends in so well. As you can see, it's blending in. And where if there's any residue of foundation on my hands from uh, the dark shades, I just go ahead and apply that to the beauty blender and mop it up with the blender and work, my, work around my face with that. So now I'm going to go in with the Sasha Buttercup um, setting powder and I'm going to use my uh, triangular brush to achieve that. I'm trying to show you guys what the brush looks like but the camera doesn't want to pick that up so I apologize about that. I'm going to go first on the bridge of my nose and apply the powder, the setting powder there where I would already created the lighter shade where I've highlighted basically. I go in under my eyes. I don't really like to bake and leave it on there because I find that sometimes it can make you look ashy and it will show in pictures that you've 
definitely highlighted those places. So I like to put the powder um, just after I've done everything else so I can dust it off immediately. I don't leave it there to bake. So I'm going in with that um, on my chin, along my lip line, uh, the top of my lips where I um, highlighted earlier. And I'm going to also do the same thing along my forehead where I've highlighted earlier. Then I'll dust off the residue with another brush, um, another powder brush. Once I've used, I'm using this right now to push the powder into my skin so that way I don't really need to start baking and leaving it under for too long. So once I'm done dusting off the residue from the setting powder, I'm going to go in with my Iman powder and this is Earth 3. I'm going to apply the powder to where I didn't highlight and I'm going to use that as a, um, uh, a, a, a crease color or a uh, toning color to help me blend the darker shades with the lighter shades. So it's like my in-between color basically. I'm going to use that and apply it to where I didn't really uh, highlight and just apply that all over my face to ensure that everything is even. So I recently just discovered another technique. So I used that same brush, the residue from the brush from the Imam powder to now dust over the eyeshadow I had created right under my brow bone. Now, sometimes I use the residue from the foundation brush that I've applied to my face to clean over that just to make sure the lines are not too harsh. But recently I discovered a new technique that I'm just trying out and I'm just gonna use that brush to dust off very lightly the area around my brow bone where the color was just sitting there so that everything just tones down and looks really blended in. So now I'm going in with my sleek contour powder in a dark shade. I'm going to use that to go over where I've applied foundation along my cheek bones, um, my hairline area and along the sides and my forehead so that the contour is actually popping a lot more um, than what it was because I've already obviously set the highlighter. I need to now set the contour area. I'll also go with that under my jawline just to ensure that everything sits very well. I'll also be doing this on the bridge of my nose and my cupid bow where I created the dark tone as well. I was going to apply this to my nose and ooh, I actually pulled my ring, my nose ring and I was going to cry at that moment guys but I had to hold it in together. Come on V. Hold it in together. Beauty is pain. <laughs> My nose is still quite sore from the piercing. You know, everyone's healing process is different. And it's taken me almost a year now. So yeah, I am now contouring the bridge of my nose. I'm going to go in with a glitter blending brush to ensure that that line is not too harsh. I should have done that initially rather than trying to use that big old brush and yanking my nose ring out. I'm just shaping the contour now around my nose just so that it's quite prominent and you can see it a lot better so that it's sharper and it sits a lot nicer than what it was. I'm going back in with the dome powder brush that I used to pack on the translucent powder under my eye so I'm using that just to bring out the highlighted bridge part of my nose just to make sure everything is working together. So now this is my um, MAC bronzing powder, um, 
it's in uh i can't remember the shade now i never remember the shades of what i use so i use this as a blush sometimes just because i want that golden bronze that look rather than you know a uh, cold and airy look though i know it's a vampy look i didn't want to look airy i still want to look golden and tanned so i'm using this as a blush So now I am going to go in with my highlighter um, and apply that to my highlighted area, just right under my um, eye eyes and just above my cheekbones. Um, I'm just applying it sparingly. I have very, very oily skin, so I am restricted to the amount of highlighting I can actually use on my skin because if not, it starts to look shiny after a while. So I'm only applying it a little bit and I'm using my fingers because I don't trust the fan brush sometimes. It just gives you a streak that I don't really personally like. So uh, I already have high cheekbones, so <laughs> my highlighter, I just keep it to a minimum. I'm gonna apply that uh, until I'm satisfied with the results. And then I'm gonna go ahead and apply it on my nose, on the bridge of my nose, just for the tip point of my nose. Um, I'm gonna make sure that I drag that up a little bit along the bridge of my nose as well without having too much going of course because again that's my t-zone area and i shine a lot around there so i just really really want it to be prominent at the tip of my nose now i'm going to use the same highlighter but i'm going to mix with the pinky shade and the golden shade just to use right below my brow bones so basically this is going to be my highlighter for under my eyes well for my brows uh, is what I'm going to use in so I'm going to go back in and fix my eyebrows a little bit just after the whole look has been applied because then I don't need to apply any more powder to my face and my brows will be something that I'll come back to later to adjust and I'm also using the same highlighter to um, enhance my um, tear ducts um, I'm not gonna drag the liner into my tear ducts I'm just gonna highlight it with a nice golden highlighter just to give it a bit of a, a, a loudness a shin to the tear duct area So now I'm going to line my lip with a MAC lip liner in cork, um, it's like a dark burgundy or auburn colour, uh, almost has like a shade of purple to it and is the closest one that I could find that, it has, that has the same undertone as the colours I've used on my eyes. So I'm going to use that to just outline my lip, um, the shape of my lips, before I apply a colour to it. And the colour I'm going to be using today is one of, again, Max, a matte liquid lip colours. I'm blending in the lip liner into my lips. Here is the MAC matte lip color that I used in red topaz or something like that um, I basically just apply that over uh, on the part where I didn't use the lip liner and I just basically blended that in together by smudging my lips together so it's the same color as the lip liner and I'm just gonna fill my lips with that um, and then I'm gonna go around and clean around the perimeters of my lips with a concealer and I'm gonna finish off the look on my lips with the lip liner to define the shape that I want I'm not
sexy, sexy. Me, I take you to my party, party, party. Watch them come, follow me, follow me, follow me. I'm using my beauty blender to pat in the concealer along my lip line and I'm using the side that I'd used with the highlighter once that is blended in I'm going back in with the same cork lip liner and now using that to define the shape that I want on my lips the outline of my lips and making that color a bit darker around the perimeter so you can actually see the color a lot better this look actually kind of matches my nails funny enough I just realized by looking at the video now <laughs> You can see it's getting more shape to it and it's getting defined so I'm kind of happy with that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add another shimmer colour from Revolution Makeup Lip Line and I'm going to apply that to the lipstick just right in the middle of my lips. Right in the middle and I just pat my lips together and then it gives me another shade, another shimmer. You could wear it with just how it was before or you can wear it like this as well so I'm gonna go ahead and enhance my beauty spots I have one right under my lip and I have another one right on my eyelid so people sometimes ask me if it's a mole but it's a beauty spot and it's it's just something that's just been growing for years now so anywhere that I feel like I need to um, correct I go ahead and I correct it and this is where I actually wing out my liner a bit more because now I'm not applying any more powder or foundation to my skin um, and I, nothing's gonna cover up my liner so this is where I go in with my liner and exaggerate it and make it stand out and pop out a bit more right now I'm adding the finishing touches and this is me just going over my waterline with a black eyeliner I'm using the Maybelline Colossal and black. Um, I've, I've used this for years and years and years. I hate doing this part. I was actually about to cry, <laughs> but I have to hold it in as a professional. Hold it in, girl. Just hold it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and just ensure that there is no fallout. There is no um, leakage. There is no um, draining. There is no crying or there is no um, marks or running of mascara or eyeliner. I'm just going in with a brush to clean anywhere that I want to clean up and I'm applying the setting spray this is a 24 hour 20 setting spray from Revolution again from Superdrugs and that's the look guys that's it I'm done I'm gonna find my earring and pop that in and I'll try and fix my eyebrows to ensure that it's a lot sharper than what it is and if anywhere has moved I will go ahead with um, my Kiko brow pen it's like a felt tip and just work my way around my brows make sure the hair is and strands are where they're supposed to be positioned and just give it the last finish oh,